All right, so we are on chapter eight, section four, and we're talking about concentration. So concentration is um, really interesting because it tells you the amount of your solute dissolved in your solution. So how much of that little bit of stuff is in the total solution? And so um, there are a lot of different ways that we can express concentration. So the units can vary, right? It could be um, grams per liter. It could be moles per 100 milliliters. It, there are a lot of different concentration units. But when we express it, a lot of times in the medical industry, what we do is we want a convenient range. So like if you print out um, something, and you want to very quickly look and see if it's the correct concentration, usually the, the numerical value is going to be between one and 200 without a decimal. And so that you adjust the unit to make that value something easy to see. And so you'll see a lot of different units, but the number will between, be between one and 200. That way it's easy to see, oh, is that off? Is that correct? That kind of thing. So we'll, we'll see that, but always remember it's the amount of solute. So the little stuff that's gonna be dissolved in the total amount of solution. Now be careful with this because amount of solution takes into account two things. It, it takes into account the solute and the solvent. So your solute, maybe that's salt, your solvent, that's water, for example. So if you had a mass of um, say it was grams per liter, right? Um, or, or grams per gram, right? If it was grams per gram, you'd have grams of sodium over grams of sodium plus grams of water, right? So be careful that you know that amount of solution is um, both of those th two things. Okay, so there are some common units, even though we said there are a lot of different ones, there are some common ones. Uh, a lot of times we'll express things as, um, millimoles per liter. And remember milli, milli means a thousand, right? So just like in one mole, we have a thousand millimoles, right? And the same thing in milli equivalents. Sometimes we don't wanna list it as moles, we wanna list it as equivalents. So what we know is in one equivalent, we have 1000 milli equivalents, right? Um, and sometimes we express it uh, that way. So just be careful if you see that little M, the little M is telling you um, that it's a thousand, right? So that's milli. So remember the, when you're expressing this, the charge on the ion. So if we're a sodium, right? Plus the charge on the ion is the number of equivalents per present in one mole. So for sodium, the number of equivalents is equal to the number of moles. But for something that is a plus two, right? If your charge is a plus two, uh, what, which one do we wanna do? Uh, doesn't really matter. If it's a plus two, um, then it's gonna be two, right? So for however many number of equivalents, it's gonna be multiply that number of moles by two. So I'll show you some examples. So, oh, their example here is calcium, right? So the other way that you can calculate concentration is through molarity. So molarity is always, 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 always moles of your solute over liters of solution, right? This one you have to know, you have to know this one. This is very, very, very common. Moles of solute over liters of solution, that's molarity. Concentration can also be expressed in millimoles per liter, right? So it's just another unit. So you just have to be able to do dimensional analysis and convert between the different units, okay? So whenever you're looking at a problem, read it. Decide what information is given. That's what you're gonna start with. And then what you sought, what you're looking for, you're gonna put at the end, right? And then just put your conversion factors in that get you to that point so that you're getting rid of the units that you want to cancel and you're left with just the units that you really need. And we'll do some examples. So sometimes we express concentration as a percent. And so it's just like a regular percent because a percent is our number of parts out of a whole times a hundred. So parts over whole times a hundred. And it's the same thing in chemistry. Thank goodness, right? There are three really common concentration units that use percent. And we call that mass, mass percent, 
So a lot of times we'll abbreviate this one, mass, mass, percent as percent, and then we put M, M. That's mass, mass, percent. It could be uh, volume, volume, percent. And so we say it's a percent, and then we put in parentheses behind it what units we're using, right? And then you could also have it as mass per volume. Any one of the three is, is common. So just remember, that that's the parts, whatever the parts are, over the total. And remember, that's the solution. The solution is the total. So the solution is the solute plus your solvent times 100. So if you're going to do some calculations with this, right, the, let's go through them. The first one is percent um, mass by mass. So our solution is prepared by mixing our solute, which is usually a solid, and our solvent on a balance and then we mix them. So we take our mass of our solute plus our mass of our solvent and we get our mass of our solution and then we can just plug it in. So um, this is how milk in the grocery store is on the shelf, right? You know, you have your 2% milk, your 1% milk, your skim milk. So what they do for all milk is they create skim milk. So they let all the fat come to the top and they skim it all off, right? That's why they call it skim milk. Um, and so now you have all skim milk. Now, however much percent you want, that's how much fat you're going to add back. So for a 2%, right, what that's telling us is that we have two grams of milk fat that we add back for every 100 grams of total solution. That total solution includes the milk fat and the skim fat. So if you if you look at this solution, where, where are these numbers for the solution coming from? They're coming from right here. I have two grams of milk fat plus 98 grams of skim milk to give me 100 grams of solution, okay? So be careful that you remember that. So now you know what the percentages for milk are. Isn't that kind of cool? All right, percent volume by volume. This is usually used when we have liquids and gases inside as our solvent or, and or as our solute. So um, it's always milliliters of our solute over milliliters of our solution. So one example of that is if you are at the grocery store and you go down the wine aisle, right? You're gonna look on the label and it's gonna say however much alcohol by volume. <coughs> so if you have wine, Maybe it's 14% by volume. So what is that telling you? That's telling you that for every 100 grams of wine, there are 14 grams of alcohol. So that's in all like alcohol bottles that you see that are consumed by the public. Percent mass by volume is a mass, which is grams divided by milliliters of our solution. This is used a lot of times in intravenous bags of things that you're gonna introduce into a patient's body. And so a lot of times um, you'll see this as like saline, right? A saline is a 0.90% mass by volume. So what that's telling me is that I have 0.9 grams of salt over hundred grams of solution. And remember that solution includes our salt and the water that that salt is uh, resuspended in, okay? So a lot of times, um, we use some different units for specific things inside the body. So like, if you want to know, is your patient's blood able to carry oxygen, right? Well, we're going to measure the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the protein inside of red blood cells that can carry oxygen. And so we give that unit in grams per deciliter. Grams per deciliter is a percent mass by volume. Right, And so the reason we do grams per deciliter instead of grams per liter is because we want that whole number that's between one and 200. And so if we give it grams per deciliter, we get for a male 13 to 18 grams per deciliter. For females, we get 12 to 16 grams per deciliter. So we, we have that number that's in a nice normal range. A lot of times inside the blood, you'll also measure things like glucose, right? Do they have, does someone have a high blood sugar, a low blood sugar, that kind of thing. Uh, we'll also measure cholesterol. And when we do that, we do it in milligrams per deciliter. So remember a deciliter, I didn't say that earlier, a deciliter is the same thing as 100 milliliters. So one deciliter is 100 milliliters. And so this is again, 
a, a milligram percent, right? And so the milligram in front of the symbol is telling us that the definition is milligrams per 100 milliliters and not grams per 100 milliliters like it was up here. This is grams per 100. This is milligrams per 100 milliliters. So the milli tells us that it's milligrams, right? So if you have glucose levels um, that are over 110 milligrams percent after fasting, that's too high. That's not higher than it should be, right? If you look at cholesterol and you have a cholesterol that's below 200 milligrams per deciliter, it's not supposed to be liter, it's supposed to be deciliter right there. So right here, make that change, are considered like in a good range, right? We don't wanna go over 200. So, so usually, just kind of remember, usually our mass per volume is given in grams per milliliter. But if we instead say milligram percent, what that's telling us is we are in milligrams per deciliter. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, last one. The other, the last kind of units that you're going to see are parts per million and parts per billion. So um, when you look at this, these are really, really good to describe very, very dilute solutions where you only need just a little bit of your solute in your solvent. So one way to kind of easily think about this is that a penny, one penny is a part per million of $10,000, right? That means that I need a million pennies to equal to $10,000. How does that work, right? I did a little conversion up here right? I have $10,000. I want to convert. I want to get rid of my dollar sign. So I say in $1, I have 100 pennies. So 100 times 10,000 is a million. So a penny is one part per million of $10,000, right? So one penny compared to $10,000 is not very much. And that's exactly what a part per million is. So if you're going to think about this in terms of volume, right? If you put five drops of food coloring in a bathtub that's full of water, that's about one part per million. But if you put one drop of food coloring in an Olympic sized swimming pool, like really, really big swimming pool, that's about one part per billion. So very, very dilute. Um, sometimes we represent uh, parts per million as one milligram per liter. And sometimes we represent uh, parts per billion as one microgram per liter. It's the same thing. So the last one, the very, very last one is percent mass by volume. So this is our parts per hundred. Um, and so if you want to get your mass per volume, right, to parts per million or to parts per billion, all you have to do is multiply by a billion, a million or a billion, and that's it. So this was kind of a lot, but what I want to show you is that if you come here, this is your, right, your, your stuff for the exam. Okay, look over here. Solution equations. Oh my goodness, they're like all here. Everything you need is here. So don't think that you have to memorize all these formulas. All you have to do is know where to go to find them. They're going to be given to you. So I suggest that you print this out before you go and work on the in-class problems. Okay. All right. So let's go to our in-class problems. All right. Here we go. Concentration. So what is the concentration in millimoles per liter of a CA2 plus solution that is 2.50 milli equivalents per liter? Hmm. What are we going to do? We have to pick out what we know and where we're trying to get to. So this is our goal here. This is our goal. So what are we starting out with? We're starting out with 100 millimole per liter of CA2+. Okay, now I wanna to get to milli equivalents. There are two different ways that you can do this. I'm gonna do this um, the long way and the short way. So let's go up here. And I'm going to give you the long way, and then I'm going to show you a little shortcut. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry, this is millimole. Okay. So I know that I have a thousand millimoles in one mole. So I get rid of my millimoles, and I want to be in right. I want to get rid of my 
I was looking at the question above that I was trying to get to. All right. So uh, my goal is milli equivalents per liter, right? So now I'm in moles. I want to get to equivalents. So if I have one mole of Mg2 plus, how many equivalents is this? And all you have to do is look at the charge. So I know that this is two equivalents, Mg2 plus, right? So now I'm in equivalents, but I want to get to milli equivalents. So I have to say um, in one equivalent, I have one milli 1,000, ha ha, 1,000 milli equivalents, right? So my equivalence changes. So I, now I've got milli equivalents per liter. Well, that's what I want to be in, right? Milli equivalents per milli equivalents per liter. So then I can just plug in a hundred times two times a thousand divided by a thousand. So what do you get when you plug that in? Well, you should get one point two five millimoles of calcium, right? Now I'm going to show you the shortcut. Do you see this? We have a thousand and a thousand. They're going to cancel each other out. So if you're in millimoles, you can convert from millimoles to milli equivalents, right? So I know that um, in one millimole of CA2 plus, I have two milli equivalents of CA2 plus. And that's all I have to do because I've canceled my millimoles and now I'm in milli equivalents per liter, right? And that's where I want to be. And so I get the same answer, 1.25 millimoles of CA2 plus. So you can do it either way. It does not matter to me, but um, just make sure that you take into account that milli. Either way is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this one so that it's not there for class so that we can do this problem that's actually there for class. Okay. All right. Now, uh, I think I'm supposed to, oh, I'm supposed to be doing the odd ones and I started on the even ones. All right, so I'll go back to doing the odd ones. What is the molarity of a 250 milliliter solution containing 4.20 moles of ZnCl2? All right, so I have 4.20 moles ZnCl2. My goal is molarity, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say, well, my total solution is not one liter anymore, it's 250 milliliters, okay? So um, for this one, I just wanna convert to, when I say molarity, I I can put this, molarity is in moles per liter. That is the unit for molarity. You always, 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 always have to do moles per liter. So what I'm in right now is moles per milliliter. So I know that I have a thousand milliliters in one liter. And so if I cancel my milliliters, 4.20 times a thousand divided by 250, and you should get 116.8, not 116.8, 16.8. .8, 16 <laughs> um, what do we got? Moles ZNCL2 per liter. Now, that's one way to write it, but this is molarity. It's moles per liter. So a lot of times the way that we write this is 16.8 molar ZnCl2. So we just put a big M and the big M represents moles per liter. So you have to be able to recognize both of them. All right, 8.27. Uh, what is the chloride molarity of a 400 milliliter of blood plasma containing 44 millimoles of Cl minus. Okay, what are we starting with? 44 millimoles Cl minus, okay? Now, what are we also starting with? A volume, which is 400 milliliters, okay? Now, what do we wanna get to? We wanna get to molarity, which is moles per liter, okay? So we're gonna to have to convert a little bit. Um, now, you 
you could do this the easy way and you could see that it's milli on top and it's milli on the bottom um, and just know that that's equal or you could you could write it out and you could say in one mole you have a thousand millimoles right your millimoles would cancel and you're in moles that's what you want and then uh, you know that you have a thousand milliliters in one liter and so your milliliters would cancel but what you see is your thousand cancels and your thousand cancels so all you really have to do is 44 divided by 400 and what you're going to get is 0 0.11 moles per liter Cl minus. And we express that as 0 0.11 molar Cl minus. Okay. All right, 8.29. How many grams of KCl must be added to water to create five liters of a 0 0.20 molar KCl electrolyte solution? All right, so what are we doing? We have to worry about what we're starting with. What are we starting with? We're trying to get two grams. Whoa, how did I do that? Hang on. <laughs> okay, we're trying to get to grams of KCL, right? But here's what we're starting with. 0.5 liters of a 0 0.02 molar KCL. So what we're starting out with is the 0 0.020 moles per liter. That's what molarity is telling us, KCL. Right, so we have KCL. Now we want to know how are we going to get that into grams? Well, here's moles. How do we get from moles to grams? Remember, we're in mole, mole town. Remember, mole town? So we, we know that there's a relationship between the number of moles of KCL and the number of grams of KCL. So, in order to do that, you have to go to the periodic table and you have to go and look what is the mass of potassium, what is the mass of chlorine? So if you go to your periodic table and you find, uh, here is potassium, 39.10, and here's chlorine, 35.45. So potassium chloride is both of them and only one of each. So what we're gonna do, right, is we're gonna say KCL, right, is equal to, uh, what did I say? I said, 39.10 plus 35.45 gives us 74.55. So we have 74.55 grams of KCL in one mole of KCL, right? That's our, our molar mass conversion. All right, and so now I'm gonna be in grams per liter. So that's great. So now I'm gonna get uh, 1.491 grams KCL, right, per liter. But that's not what they're asking. They're asking for a five liter solution. So all you have to do is multiply by five liters and you get uh, seven point, we'll give it, we'll give it two, is it two sig figs? Yep, two sig figs, grams KCL, okay? All right, uh, 8.31, how many grams of D-glucose which is dextrose, must be added to water to prepare 500 milliliters of a 5% mass by volume dextrose solution. Okay, so if you want to know this, you need to go and get that formula, right? So the formula that you're looking for is your percent mass by volume. So go look it up and come back. You should have gotten grams of solute over milliliters of solution. Okay, and that's the abbreviation for solution, S-O-L-N, solution, times 100. So what do we need to do? Well, plug in what you know. We know it is a 5.0% mass by volume. And so do we know our grams of glucose? No, we don't know that. So that's grams of glucose over our total solution. What's our total solution is 500 milliliters. All right, times 100. So what are we gonna do? We need to isolate our grams of glucose. So we're gonna put 500 on the bottom. No, no, <laughs> we're gonna put 500 on the top, 100 on the bottom, they cancel. What you do to one side, you gotta do the other side over 100. So our grams of glucose are equal to, what do we get? 25 grams. Okay. 
All right, uh, 8.33, calculate the percent mass by volume for the solute in each of the following solutions. All right, so A, we have 2.50 grams of KCL in, ooh, this is gonna be easy, 5.0 uh, milliliters of solution. The formula is multiply by 100. That's it, mass by volume. All you have to do is go look on your, your sheet. What is percent mass by volume? Grams per milliliter. Easy peasy. Okay, so what do we get? You plug it into your calculator and you should get 5% mass by volume KCL. All right, B, 7.5 grams in 120 mils. Look, we're in the right, we're in the right units, yay. So that was casein. And this is the casein is the protein that's inside of milk. Okay, and what you should get is 6.3% mass by volume casein. What am I? Oh, it should be three sig figs. As I come up here and look, it should be three sig figs, 5.00. This one is only two sig figs. Okay, good to go. All right. Does insulin are present in 26 grams of a 0.45% mass by mass solution. Okay, mass by mass, this is a slightly different one. So you need to go and look on your sheet and make sure that you know what your, what your formula is. So percent mass by mass, that's our grams of solute over our grams of solution times 100. So just go look it up on the formula sheet. All right, so what do we know? We know we have a 0.450% mass by mass, and that equals to our grams of solute, which we don't know, that's our insulin, right? So grams of insulin over a 26.0 gram solution times 100. So just don't forget your times 100, because that can that can be a problem. <laughs> so we need to get grams of solution by itself. So what we're gonna do is put 26 on the top, 100 on the bottom, that cancels. So 26 on top, 100 on bottom. So you get grams of insulin are equal to, I got 0 0.117 grams, okay? 8.37, what is the concentration in parts per million? Go look on the sheet. As soon as you see that, go look on the sheet. What is parts per million? PPM is grams of solute over milliliters of solution times, be careful with this, parts per, what are we doing? Parts per million, right? That's parts per million, okay? So what do we get? We should get, plug it into our formula, 0 0.30, uh, am I doing that right? Yeah, 30 milligrams. I wanna convert that into grams. So I'm gonna say in one gram, I have a thousand milligrams, right? Because I want my grams here and what am I given? I'm given milligrams, can't stay in it. Okay, so 0 0.003 grams of fluoride right, F minus. So what do we do? Now we go ahead and plug it in. Our parts per million is equal to, gosh, I should have given us more room. <laughs> uh, I say 0 0.003 grams per milliliters of solution. We got 60 milliliters of solution. Um, and then we're gonna multiply that times a million, right? And so what do you get? You get, uh, right, yeah five parts per million F minus, okay? All right, and the rest we'll do in class. All right, y'all have a good rest of your day.